93 entities this year. The city of Piqua has participated in this joint bid successfully for many years. They recently switched to doing a bid covering a two year period instead of just one year at a time. Uh, we estimate our salt usage at 2,500 tons per year for this bid, looking at a worst case scenario for a bad winter. Um, last year, our price for salt uh, was $58.32 per ton. Uh, the winter season for 2022 to 2023, we will be looking at paying $77.73 per ton for salt. And looking at the 2023 to 2024 salt season, we would be looking at a cost of $84.73 per ton. We are requesting to be able to purchase salt from Compass Mineral America Incorporation for up to 2,500 tons of salt for the 2022-23 season, not to exceed $194,325 and to purchase up to 2,500 tons of salt for the 23-24 season, not to exceed $211,825. Uh, for your information, last year we used approximately 943 tons of salt and spent $52,713.73. of our allocated budget. Any comments from commissioners? So that's correct, just saying that's what we could purchase up to. That's not saying that's what we're going to purchase, correct? We do not have to purchase that total amount. We can just purchase up to that if we need to. Let yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? I guess the only comment I have, they've switched to um, doing uh, the bid now covering a two-year period, which means we'll be locked in for those two years. Yes. And that's we, helpful. That is very helpful because um, you've seen in the past where we've seen prices jump considerably. Um, I know there was one year that we went from under $50 a ton to over $100 a ton. So it's, it's nice to know looking forward, at least for the next couple of years, we know what our prices will be. That's great. Great. And hopefully we continue to have mild winters like we have the past two winters. Uh, Brian, just a, another question. I know that we, on occasion we use, what, beet juice and other kinds of substances. D does that have a positive effect on the budget? I mean, do we spend less on salt if we use other kinds of things? And is there a proportion, you know? one-tenth beet juice and, and, and 90 salt, I don't know. We, uh, we, we mix some beet heat in with our salt and, and what that helps with the salt is it helps the salt, that re, it helps it last a little bit longer when it's out on a roadway. Um, okay. It helps it activate quicker um, when it's out and it, and it changes the, um, the, 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 free, the freeze point of the salt where it'll, um, it'll, it'll go to a lower degree before it'll actually flash freeze. So that's helpful um, having that. So we'll continue to use those so things we'll to supplement. we'll continue to use that as well, yes. All right. Any comments from our citizens? All right. I will entertain a motion. I make a motion we approve resolution number R-96-22. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution number R-97-22. A resolution authorizing a purchase order to Blue Scope Construction Incorporated for the construction of a pole barn at the water treatment plant. Yes, good evening. Um, back in 2017, when the water plant was built, um, there was uh, uh, the maintenance the maintenance barn at that time was nixed from the project due to cost overruns and the designer wanting an absorbent amount of money, almost a million dollars back then, to design it. So that was not done. Um, the maintenance staff has been working out of the old water plant, which is um, in a dilapidated sh state um, where the, their garage is. So we're looking to get them a new barn the one that should have went in in 2017, up at the water treatment plant, right behind it. This is a 60 foot by 40 foot barn. Um, 
with using this Blue Scope um, Construction Incorporated, they're a, they're a cooperative. So they will they basically instead of us going out for design, bidding, construction, oversight of the project, they wrap it all into one, and you know we tell them what we wanted in the building, and they give us a price for it. So that's what we're looking to do with this project. Um, the cost that they gave us, we have a uh, 30 days. The cost uh, the cost is good until September 9th. It's for 475 thousand two hundred ninety eight dollars. Uh, we added in about $24,000 to make an even 500000 in case there's any overruns or anything we want to add at the last minute. So um, in your packet was all the designs for this. There was a highlight of, and some pictures of it. It's very simple metal frame building on a concrete slab, a couple garage doors that fit in the heavy equipment. Um, then uh, one-third of it will be used as a workshop to work on uh, pieces of equipment, pumps, motors, uh, some some storage in there that stuff we're storing down at the old water plant um, benefit of this is we are consolidating our operations and maintenance staff which will be will be nice um, we, we as you do know too the old water plant right now is being used um, through Bowling Green and the fire department and some battery testing down there they've been looking to expand their operation down there as well so us getting off the premise there will allow for future leasing of that property uh, a couple other benefits are we've been heating that big um, big old water plant down there. So when we can shut off all the valves to that and everything, we're looking at that could be about $8,000 a year. And then probably about 200 hours a year of our, our maintenance guys' time um, <coughs> maintaining the facility with mowing, plowing, and, and the such. So getting off of that property is our goal, and this, is, this building is what we like to do to get off of it. Do you guys have any questions at this time? It's not budgeted for this year, but will be for next year, correct? Yes, it was, it's and in the CIP listing for next year. We just we started getting pricing so we could be more accurate next year, and we came up, you know, they've offered us a price. To, if we could agree to this now, they will start construction next month and be done by January. So okay. it would, I guess, technically go into next year a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Any questions or comments from? Yeah, are these are the funds used to pay for the building? Uh, is this a uh, water system enterprise fund or? This, this will be out of the water fund. Yes, the 403 fund. Yeah. Okay. Is that going to impede on any other projects for this year then? No. The, um, the only other project we have going on is still in the design phase. That's the electrical booster station upgrade or the booster station upgrade of their electrical systems. Um, the thing that's hard with when you're budgeting year to year is sometimes you don't know when the project's going to be designed, and you don't. It's really hard to allocate exactly which year you're going to do the construction. So sometimes it may be get done a little sooner than you think, and sometimes it may be pushed back six months or something. So this is something we're planning on for next year, but we have the cash reserve to, to jump on this now and take care of it. Okay. Any other comments? And it would be located out near the water plant, the new yes, water plant. Yes, it's actually going to be right behind the old water, or the new water plant. And they they actually left gravel, and that the area is there where the where the building could have went, but they just didn't do it in 2017. So it so, is electric stubbed out already. So there's natural gas stubbed out there. So it's it's ready to go. So site preparation would be minimal. Yes, it would be minimal. Yes, that's I think part of their how they could have it done in three or four months is that it's it's ready. You know, the the land is ready to go. Any other comments? Any comments from our citizens? Kevin, will the weed harvester be put in the new building? The weed harvester has been um, stationed out at RM Davis Tower out there. Uh, it fits really nice out there, so we'll probably leave it out there. The weed harvester would take up a lot of space in this building. This will probably be more for the mowing, our backhoe, weed eaters, um, tools that we use at the plant. On maintenance and stuff and the such so does the water department have equipment down in the small three-car garage down on the east side of the levee of swift run no they do not right now do you know whose equipment that is in the city y yes i do okay yeah. and what was the budget for this building uh this this building um the original budget was about 250 and then we once we got into the co-op and it, it went up to about 450. and this is 40 by 60. 40 by 60, yes. All right. Thank you. Yep. Any other comments or questions? All right. 
I move that we adopt resolution R-97-22. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution number R-98-22. A resolution authorizing city manager to pursue all options to resolve Swift Run, Echo Lake, and Franz Pond levy and retention issues. Okay. I'm actually going to speak to this because I'm the commissioner that brought this um, to the commission uh, mm -hmm. for the resolution. Um, Commissioner Grissom and I sit on the CAC, which is the Citizen Advisory um, Council that has been looking at what ODNR is requiring the city to do when it, we look at Swift Run, Echo Lake, and Franz Pond. Um, they are challenging us with a million year flood plan, which means uh, 27 inches of water, which um, has never really happened here. And so we are looking at some different options of looking uh, possibly politically um, to talk to some of our state representatives to help lower that. We're now at a point, I think the highest level we've had was 11.9. Is that correct? Over like 24 hours? Two days, two days yeah, two days. 11.9 over two days. Um, and so we're trying to lower that level. Uh, the, the company that did the study, they did it based on someplace in Pennsylvania, and they, they kind of use that as the um, what they look at in this area, but we're trying to look at our community, which is very different, obviously, than that. And, uh, our, and as we were talking with the citizens group, people want to talk to our representatives, our Congress um, people in our state to help maybe lower that and do some things politically that might help us here. So um, at the point with what the committee, the, the Citizens Advisory Committee is doing, we're looking at different options and different things like that, but we wanted to make sure that we were looking at every option available that we had to do, and so we're asking um, the city manager, um, Oberdorfer, to look at all of those options so that we know when we come to the end of this um, that we have tried everything we can to make sure that we are taking care of this the best way possible and the most affordable way possible for our citizens and community. Nothing has been decided yet. Um, conversations are happening. There's a lot of um, information out in public that people think these decisions have been made and they have not. Um, we are just trying to get all the information we can. I do want to point you to the Piqua Dam Study 2002.com website. The website's been set up. It has all the information of what we have been talking about, the different scenarios, different ideas that could happen with this. And um, as I said, there's been three meetings that have happened with the Citizens Advisory Committees. Um, there'll be focus group meetings coming up, and those focus groups will include the people that live around Swift Run, Franz Pond, and Echo Lake to talk about where we are and what we're doing. And so we're just trying to make sure we keep our citizens engaged and aware of, of what's happening. After that, there will be more public meetings before that final decision is made. So um, I'm, I, I'm excited that we have this opportunity to do this and we have some people that will hopefully be helpful for us with this. And I would encourage you, if you um, feel so moved, to reach out to Representative Steve Huffman and express your concern about this because the more that they hear from us, the more we become that voice that might help to get this changed, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any comments or questions from commissioners? Yeah. All right, hearing none, how about our citizens? Any comments or questions regarding this resolution? I just have a real quick question. Um, so, because I live out in that district, uh, so Steve Huffman is our state rep, Warren Davidson, and we also have Jim Jordan too. So, well, yeah, and yeah, and they're, they're um, Jim Jordan, and is the, yes, but, but we also have this is something that would have to happen on state level. So yes. we have Senator Huffman, and we also have Jenna Powell as our representative. So those are our two Jenna, local. Yes, yes yeah. those are two good people to have. And how do you get on the uh, citizens? Uh, Advisory committee. Advisory committee. So that, that came out of the initial meetings that we started to have. There were certain citizens that, because they started small, then they're going to the focus groups, and then they're going to have a 
a citywide meeting. I think that one is in October. I'm looking at my notes here. I think that's October 3rd at 530, and that will be a community summit at that point. So that will be open to everybody. Oh, okay. So how? So that will be posted somewhere yes, that we yes. can come. And, and I be recommend that, that you fo you follow the um, information on the website that I gave the um, the Pickwood Dam Study 2002.com because that's where all the information will come out. So and we'll also have it on our alert system. Are you on the alert system of the city? Um, I think so. Do you get emails when we have planning commission meetings and different things no. like that? That so don't. if you go to the website, talk to me after the meeting. I'll get okay. you connected with that. Could, ma'am, could we have your name? Oh, and Paige, Paige Steeman. And your address? I'm at a District 4. Oh, okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? I'm Mark Mullen. And is this something that the state is mandating that we do with the hydraulic? Now, you know the reason why the hydraulic was there in the first place? Mm -hmm. I'm asking. Uh, go ahead and tell me, because you're... No, uh, well, well, I, well, I can give you a little history of the, of the hydraulic system. Uh, the uh, site manager at the uh, Johnson Farm has written what I consider to be the most definitive history uh, of that project. We're talking about a project that dates back to about 1870. Uh, and originally uh, a corporation was formed here in Piqua called the Piqua Hydraulic Company. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, they actually bought water from the Miami Erie Canal at Lockington, brought it down Harden Road in a trough, dammed up Swift Run, uh, Echo Lake, and Francis Pond, and all that water came through that system and then went down the race. And at the bottom of the race, of course, we had uh, water wheels which turned into mechanical power. Uh, and um, and you, do you also in that in that study? I, I can get you a copy of that study. Well, do you also know? I used to work for the Miami Conservancy District okay. a long time ago. Yeah. And that now is being used to drain Eagle's Nest, Deerfield, all the runoff from the springs that are running mm -hmm. during the year of the drought. The, the pipes are running half full of water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all that water is carried through the hydraulic. So you'd also have to look at how to deal with all that drainage coming out of that development. Mm -hmm. Which we have been looking at over the years. I know we did some work on the drainage system coming out of Eagle's, Light, Eagles Nest um, because there was some work that was done there. And there's also been some, some work. We've been looking at the issues behind the Baptist Church because that's coming out of Deerfield, um, which is between the Baptist Church and, um, uh, yes, the road, Edgewood, Ed, no. Yeah. I did a drainage yeah. study mm -hmm. for the development up there before everything got kicked off mm -hmm. and there was changes made. Yeah. All right. Just mm -hmm. trying to f figure out where everybody's at. Mm -hmm. Well, and please, please look at the dam, um, the, the website, and please come to that, the community meeting on, um, in October. I think he got my name. Okay, good. <laughs> do, you live on the, do you live on the lake? Well, I used to live in on Carlisle Drive. It was, okay. And that's when I did the drainage studies. Okay. And I'm digging out all my old maps and aerial photographs Good. and groundwater surveys. And so maybe I can help him. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to talk to you later. <laughs> right. I'll be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Jeff Lang, 9586 North State Route 66. Uh, this resolution is very important to me and all the citizens of Piqua to have our city manager uh, go forward with Commissioner Hines to uh, pursue a political avenue with our local elected officials to try to lower these 27 inches uh, possible maximum precipitation. Uh, some history not to the hydraulic canal, but to some history from ODNR dam safety on their early reports to the city of Pilkwood, they mentioned a hundred year event, a rain event, and that was a 1% chance of happening. And that was 5.9 inches of rain in 24 hours. That was the first two reports. The middle three reports mention no longer the hundred year, but the 500 year, which is a 0.2% probability of happening. The last three reports do not state a 100 or a 500, but a PMP of 27 inches. 
So when you hear the old term, the goalpost is moving, this game, it's moving, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the engineering firm that the city of Piqua has engaged with, Santec, uh, is, is a very knowledgeable young man, Rob Kirkbride, uh, with the help of the city manager, with Kevin, uh, pursuing all avenues, with the CAC having 16 active members on this uh, board to learn as much as we can, to ask as many questions, and believe me, we ask lots of questions. It feels like sometimes we don't make any progress, but I think we are. Uh, I think we will be very, very well versed to make a final decision when we have our first public summit. Uh, as I think it's October 3rd of 5.30. I don't think the location's announced we've, we've yet. Not, yeah, no. but uh, I, I applaud everybody pursuing this avenue and I think it will be very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Dan French, 1127 North Sunset. I overlook uh, uh, Echo Lake when there's water in it and I overlook Echo Lake's mud when there isn't water in it <laughs> and one's much nicer than the other without doubt. Um, I just want to amplify a little bit of what uh, what Jeff said. Uh, the goalposts have been moving. Uh, bureaucracies tend to do things like that. Um, and for perspective, the 27 inches in 24 hours is just, in my opinion, an outrageously huge number that was established by a consultant for the federal government who lumped Ohio and parts of Indiana in with parts of Pennsylvania and one place on the very eastern side of Pennsylvania once upon a time got 27 inches of rain in 24 hours. Uh, Piqua has never had anything close to that. Uh, my assistant at the company and I did a whole lot of research and the most that uh, Piqua has ever had was uh, in uh, August of 1995 uh, when 11 and a half inches fell in two days. Um, by comparison, the, the floods in eastern Kentucky just got a lot of press and the terrible thing for those people over there. Um, but that was 14 inches of rain in five days. Now their topography is very different than ours. So 14 inches of rain collects in a trough very quickly and gets nasty. Um, but the point being this 27 inch number is, is way out of the range of anything that Piqua has ever experienced. And the numbers that uh, my assistant came up with go back 100 years. And she also looked in Dayton. She also looked in Sydney. The 1913 flood was, I think, 13 inches of rain in three days. Uh, but it was before the dams and everything else. So by perspective, that's just a number that's out of line with anything that we've got here. Now, I think from what we've learned from, from the uh, consultants who are working here, they're, they're making a good faith effort, and the city is making a good faith effort um, to respond to an outrageous goal. Uh, they're spending a lot of money doing that, um, but they're making a, a good faith effort to do it. Um, but there's just, it's, it's just way out of line of anything. The, the existing system needs some improvement. That as much has come out pretty clearly from the, from the um, study that Stantec is doing we don't need 27 inches of improvement. Um, so I'm hoping that whatever meetings take place, uh, uh, there can be some, some, uh, some logic and some, uh, some facts. I mean, uh, what I think we need to do is, is seek a waiver based on data um, so that people can understand in the ODNR, at the, at the very top levels of the ODNR, that uh, this may be a, a nice goal for millions of acres, but for the 10, 12 acres of uh, rainy drainage in the Piqua area, um, it's, it's an unreasonable goal. And so I uh, applaud the process and hope you're successful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Dan. Anyone else have a comment? All right, I'll entertain a motion for this. I make a motion we approve resolution number R-98-22. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We're ready for public comment. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the city commission regarding agenda items, issues, 
or to provide information. Comments are requested to be limited to five minutes and specific questions should be addressed to the city manager's office. Jeff. Hi, again, uh, nothing on the agenda. I have a comment for I uh, am coming up in my 19th year in front of the city commission to announce our results of the 19th annual clean sweep of the Great Miami River our PAL section protecting our waterways, uh, the nonprofit that I head up. Uh, it's hard to believe that this is going on for 19 years. <laughs> if you would have asked me in 2004, you gonna clean the river, I, I would say, yeah. And then people would say, well, how many times are you gonna do it? I'm gonna go one. <laughs> and I, I haven't done one. I've, I've done 19 with all these great volunteers. Uh, so 104 volunteers came out on July 16th. We split into four groups. Uh, we covered the 16 miles from South Sydney to South Piqua with great gusto and fever because uh, uh, river rats, as what we call ourselves, uh, take great gusto in their job and keeping that beautiful river clean. So uh, collective totals were 5,150 pounds, including 33 tires. That's a 26% increase over last year, which was our record low year of 18 years. So we've gone, unfortunately, back up the other way. Now, some reasons for that uh, are various, but three of the main reasons is the number of volunteers. The more volunteers I put on it, the more trash we get. Less volunteers, less trash. Water level, if the water's down, we get more trash because it's antique trash that we usually run over in high water and we don't see it. And another factor that dawned on me just a few years ago is the average age of the volunteers. Mm. When they're young, they're vivacious, energetic, and they will go off the river banks and go up and grab it off the banks and bring it back down, which I applaud their efforts because anything up from the river's water's edge will eventually get into the river's edge. So uh, it's all good. Uh, unusual finds because people are sort of infatuated with that. Two shopping, two shopping carts uh, beyond recognition which grocery store they came from. Two very large bags of children's clothes. Mm. One burnt, mm. one not. I suspect bed bugs or something. Mm -hmm. A stop sign, king size mattress and box springs. The rear end of a 70s vintage Cadillac. Mm. <laughs> large Freon can. 25 foot long by six inch section of black plastic irrigation pipe, about 14 small trailer tires put into the dumpster before we ever started, which is a no-no for Hemelgarn because we'll get fined extra if the tires are in the dumpster. So I had to jump in the dumpster and get those out first thing in the morning, good wake up call. A folding laundry hamper, a baker's rack, projection TV. You remember those, the big <laughs> lenses on the bottom and they had the primary colors and different intensities would put the hue up on the screen, that was interesting. Uh, we also had a straight edge razor, the old fashioned one mm. that flips open. I cleaned it up, got a fairly good edge on it, but I'm not gonna shave with it. <laughs> uh, I found, uh, volunteers found two 55 gallon uh, steel barrels. We found two large sections of dark blue shag carpet, oh which was disgustingly heavy and covered with all kinds of silt and everything like that. Mm. Uh, but I had volunteers from Illinois, five from Colorado, three from Florida, one from New York City. He drove 13 and a half hours on Friday, stayed at my house Friday night, cleaned the river on Saturday. He had a family emergency and drove 13 and a half hours back on Saturday afternoon. Gosh. I applaud his efforts very much. I had uh, one person from Kentucky. I'd like to thank our main sponsor, Cargill who cranks in the majority of the bucks for the whole river. And that's any lake all the way down to the Ohio River. So that includes about 1,200 volunteers. Uh, Atlanta Sportswear, locally here, that does all of our shirts for all the sections. Miami Conservancy District, uh, the city of Sydney for their efforts to uh, watch out over all of our budgets for all 18 sections of the whole 170 miles of the river. Butler County Stormwater District that oversees the last 42 miles of the general uh, or the Great Miami River getting cleaned up, and then uh, Bond Bright Distributors. 
So it was another successful sweep. Unfortunately, as I said, the numbers went up. Also, this year's tally, along with the past 18 years, now puts us over 200,000. So we have 203,400 pounds of trash out of the river in 19 years in our 16 miles. All right. 200,000. That's 100 wow. tons of trash. Uh -huh. That's including 1,900 tires. And PAL volunteers collectively have worked 14,500 community man hours. Wow. So my hat's off to my volunteers. My hat's off to the city of Piqua, Brian and the street department for the help on getting all the trash off the D team, uh, to the police department for having a police officer out there on a four wheeler with a trailer to help my elderly volunteers that walk through town that have their coolers on that trailer that sometimes sit on that trailer. They're up in their seventies. Uh, one of them was close to 79 years of age. Uh, so I applaud the police department. I applaud the fire department for knowing that we're out there in case we have an emergency. They know where we're at stretched all over town. And just the main thing is, is all of my volunteers that just, I beat on them every year. I call them repeat offenders because once I have my clasp on you, I don't let go of you. And it really shows because they all take ownership in their sections and great gusto on what they do. So. Uh, I'm very, very proud, mainly of my volunteers. They do a great job. Wonderful. So thank you very much. You appreciate have, it. Good. Thank you. Having having been on that a few times myself, I know what yeah. a beautiful gift it is for these people, and and it's fun. I mean, you have a good yes. time doing it. But did you say a hundred tons of trash over the 19 years? Wow. Well, thank you for your dedication and your belief in starting this. Because you're welcome. You're welcome. Your, your love of our water is very appreciated. Thank you for all the city help. I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank Jeff. You. We appreciate it. This really isn't the Jeff and Dan show, but uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to, uh, to, to comment. Uh, Saturday night was the ninth annual Down a River, Down a Beer event, which is uh, a great credit to the city of Piqua, in my opinion. You see people there that uh, I don't see any other place, I don't think. I think they had over 500 and some odd people this year because I know they ordered 500 glasses and they ran out of them, so they, they used uh, uh, last year's glasses and some others. Uh, this was started uh, nine years ago by Dr. Jim uh, and Cheryl Burkhart, Dr. Beer as he's called, um, and uh, they've done a good job and they've, they've even done succession planning and turned it over to two young, uh, two young couples to carry on the, the project. Um, so one, I wanted to come up and just give them an attaboy for, for doing that because it was a, a lot of fun and it's a great credit to the city and the, the city helps with the, the power plant building and so forth. The other thing I wanted to comment was um, our company, uh, French Royal Mill Machinery, uh, reverse engineered and designed and produced uh, uh, what we call the river fire rings, five uh, uh, floating gizmos <laughs> that uh, that hold uh, firewood and, and are lit about eight o'clock with Jeff in the in, in the canoe and uh, he had Dr. Beer with him this time, um, but they they burn for a while and it look, they light up the, the river very very nicely um, because the water level is so low um, we had great difficulty getting them out there. Um, uh, Jeff and uh, our guys, and these guys are hourly paid uh, uh, people of the company, but they volunteer their time. They're not on, they're not on my clock as they're doing this. Um, they had a hard time getting the five fire rings out there because the water level is so low. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, you've heard me talk to you before about the, the low dam behind the power plant, and this is just one more um, opportunity, hopefully, to... Uh, uh, inspire you all to see to it that whatever is done back there uh, uh, has weirs in them or um, features or something or another to raise the water level uh, above where it is right at the moment. Uh, um, uh, last time I was here, you all approved a, a plan to do it and I haven't seen anything since that. Um, hopefully it's going the right direction and funds and engineering are being found, but somebody is uh, uh, pushing ahead to make sure that uh, the features, the water features as they're sometimes called in the river are going to be sufficient to back up water so that there's more water 
in that river behind the power plant and from Lock 9 down than there is today. Um, and hopefully it will stay that way. So I just uh, uh, want to take the opportunity, one, to recognize the wonderfulness of the, of the Dardab, and two, to encourage you all to, uh, to see to it that whatever gets done with the low dam um, will end up with more water in that river than there is today um, and has a, a free passage for fish to come up and canoes and kayaks to safely go down. And there's lots of ways of doing that. I know Mark Wyan sent you all uh, some pictures of a, of a place in Colorado that does it. And there's other things that will accomplish these goals. Um, and hopefully there'll be enough money found to make these goals a reality. Mm -hmm. So good luck with that. Press Thank on. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commission, I'd like to respond to Mr. French. Uh, I spoke to a gentleman, I believe, that fabricated those fire uh, pits. And uh, we had discussed when we go through the design, uh, creating an opportunity to have a receiver in the river and have that designed into uh, whatever improvements we make so that it would be a permanent, um, a permanent place that we could actually put those and have more events hopefully in the future. Very nice gentleman. Thank you. That's great. Great idea. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Very good. Um, I was here at the last meeting and I, Paige, again, hi. Um, I was here at the last meeting and we had spoke on an agenda to um, be in support of backyard chickens the last time that we were here. And uh, I was only able to go out for probably about three hours max. So I have over 42 signatures to date, and I plan on getting more as soon as I get caught up and get time, but how do I give these to you? Because uh, at least 28 signatures came from your district. I think you said that. Ward one. Yeah, mm -hmm. 28 signatures just from your district, and the rest was addresses. in mine. You got their addresses. Addresses and phone numbers, so it could be vetted that they do are in support of that. So how do I get a uh, copy of these to you? Do I just make copies and then present it to you guys? You can do, why don't you finish what you're gonna do and then when you're done, maybe bring it in that way, so. Okay. And I mean, that way we'll have it all together, so. Yeah, well, I'm still working on this, but I just wanted to give you guys that and see where we were at in the process of doing that, because I, I think uh, the majority of the consensus was that even some people, they were definitely for it, but they didn't want a lot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people were like, well, I wouldn't care if you had some, but as long as it's done in a specific way, I don't think anybody wants a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and I think if you all. remember our law director, who also is a law director in Covington, they passed an ordinance recently, and he shared with us that ordinance, so we have that and we're looking at yeah. it. Yeah, and Troy and Sydney and Covington, I think. Just did Troy do one, too? I don't know if Troy did one or not. I, I'm not familiar. I'm just familiar with the Covington one. Uh, one of the things I will tell you is, is that one of the things I gave the commission this week is there are various subdivisions in town from Park Ridge to Eagle's Nest to Indian Lake, and there are several other subdivisions in town. Many of those subdivisions have protective covenants against having uh, chickens. So that's something that yeah. you have to look at also when you're you're doing that. And the, this ordinance, if it were to pass, would not include those areas that's correct okay well i couldn't say it wouldn't include it the city's not going to force it but privately private property owners would then have the right to try and force those provisions if they desired oh, okay yeah i didn't go to any of those divisions in particular so and I that would depend on homeowners associations with those and any individual property owner in a in, those, okay. in a subdivision could file a a lawsuit to enforce a protective covenant yeah yeah. I live in one of those areas, and there, we do have a homeowners association. And I've been yeah. li used to live in one of those out in California, but I, I just think that we have an ethical and a moral responsibility to, mm -hmm. you know, with the inflation that's rising and everything. I think people are doing all they can to try to make ends meet and to try to, you know, have a clean source of food and not, you know, they're not butchering them. They're mostly used for eggs. So well, yeah, and and I think what what um, but um, 
Mr. Patrizio has given us is a really good place to start with Covington. Okay. And I agree. I think doing it and having some boundaries is what we need. Yes. But we just have to look at everywhere else in the city and so yes um, absolutely yeah. i totally agree with that so i'll make a copy of this and then i'll give you what i got so far and okay. then i'll give you what i have going forward future okay yeah. future. Yeah, thank you, you wanna, thank you we can get we can make copies before you leave and then we can give it back to you how's that sound? okay that's fine just okay. have to be at work by 7 45. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> okay. thank you yeah thank you thank you I forgot to thank Ed Krieger and Tim Angle down at the power plant and also Paul for allowing the power plant, the old power plant, to be opened up for Dardab last Saturday. Uh, I was told almost 150 folks went through there to see that majestic old plant oh, and they awesome. really enjoyed it and hopefully it will be allowed back in there next year. And also I'd like to thank all the local eateries that fed all the Powell volunteers because uh, I can't do that without them also. So thank you. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Any other comments? Okay, our city manager's report. Good evening, I have two items. Um, first of all, I just wanna um, bring to light the fact that we've been doing quite a bit of maintenance around the building and I apologize for any inconveniences to the public with access. It's been kind of a, a cat and mouse around the building to get in. Uh, on occasions, we had the roof replaced uh, and that was a result of some storm damage. Uh, and also, too, they're doing some ceiling and painting around the building. Uh, the building's 20 years old, and so it's time to do some maintenance. Um, this weekend, we'll be doing some ceiling of the parking lot and some parking lot maintenance, and so the drop box will not be available on Friday. Uh, I believe it's Friday, correct, Brian, uh, uh, for the public. Um, the, the parking lot itself will be closed for the majority of the weekend uh, while we do that maintenance. Uh, I'd also like to bring to light the fact we're having the city picnic this Friday, and that's to uh, celebrate our employees. We have 192 full-time employees uh, that service 21,000 residents, and they do a fantastic job, as we heard earlier this evening with Mr. Lang. Um, it's a real pleasure to have a group like that, so we'll be celebrating their public servant uh, status out at the golf course this Friday afternoon. Um, and so that's, that's a really great event. Uh, lastly, I know there's been a lot of inquiries about the old McDonald's property out on Covington Avenue. Uh, it resides just outside the city limits, so we don't have control of it. It's in, within control of the county. Uh, back in, I believe it was August of 2020, they did, a, um, they did an inspection of the property, and they did cite the property as being unsafe. Uh, it's been entwined in court with the adjudication orders. Uh, but the county commissioners as well as the building department have been pressing forward as quickly and as expeditiously as we can. Uh, unfortunately, there is process involved with it. Um, as of late, the, they had filed a motion to dismiss. Uh, Gator, Gator Investments had filed a motion. It had been denied, so we are still on track to get relief on that property. And that's the end of my uh, report. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioner's comment. Uh, Commissioner Hines. Thank you, Mayor Pearson. Um, yeah, I just want to celebrate um, the wonderful evening of Dardab. We have been having this for nine years. We have had perfect weather except the first year when we had it and we were inside at Edison because it was so cold and rainy. We had it at a different time of the year. I think it was later in the fall. But um, I've been there for all nine years and it's just wonderful to see how it's gotten larger and larger. And it was a record breaking crowd on Saturday. It's the largest we've had. And again, the weather's beautiful and kudos to, to being able to do it behind the old power plant because it is a beautiful, beautiful place just to sit and just to, to listen to music and just to be with, with good folks. So it was a wonderful, wonderful night. And a lot of volunteers make that happen. So thanks for all our volunteers. Um, and I know that Mayor Pearson is going to bring up our town hall, so I'll let you do that when you get to your, with your piece. But um, this Saturday we have uh, the beginning of soccer, and the Optimist Club does a TriStar soccer event every year at Pittsburgh Field. And there are prizes and different things that go on with that activity. It's an event that you work on your soccer skills. So I invite people who have young folks who are soccer players to come down, and the Optimist Club will put them through some um, some different activities, and hopefully your child will win one of the awards. So and there's a lot of other good prizes that, that will be there as well. 
Also, a reminder, we are moving towards Labor Day, and it occurred to me when I looked at the calendar, the next time we're here will be after Labor Day for a meeting, which is hard to believe that we're at that point of the summer. Uh, again, just a reminder, the uh, Pickwick Show Choir has their annual fundraiser, Night in White, at the Ormond Estate at the new clubhouse, which will be Sunday evening, September 4th. Uh, we call it Night in White because it's the last night you can wear white before Labor Day. So um, come out. It's always a fun event, and there's a great band, and it's just a great time to get together and be with one another. Tickets are at um, Readmore um, at Hallmark. So, uh, and just a reminder with that, school is starting. So as our kids wind up their summer break, um, I love that I am hearing more and more kids in my neighborhood outside at night, which is how it was when I was a kid. They're outside, they're laughing, they're on the streets, but that means they're riding scooters and bikes and whatever. Just be careful as you drive through your neighborhoods for the young people and uh, just blessings as we go into this next school year. So it should be a good one. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say thanks for the update on the old McDonald's. Uh, that's great to hear progress going on. I mean, that's definitely been a, a topic conversation for some time. Mr. Lang, I want to thank you for all your efforts on the river, man, 100 tons. I mean, think about if that was all out there right now. That, that's just insane on how much and the efforts put forth. And I think leaning into your point with the volunteers, I mean, you can't thank them enough. And that's the one thing I'm still working on. We're starting to really form on our committee um, how we get some of the younger people involved, um, not just in the city politics, um, into volunteerism. What can we do to build up our community? And that's a perfect example of the impact socially as well as just for our city, everything. I mean, it's, that's huge. And um, you can't do it without your volunteers. So I just really appreciate all that. So thanks. Mr. Griffin, better. Thank you. Uh, a couple comments. Number one, uh, citizens are probably not aware that discussions are ongoing about the future use of the Moat Park building. Uh, and I've had several meetings with city manager, um, and uh, um, there will be more discussion to come. Um, the fundamental issue, as far as I'm concerned, is that um, the public is not aware of, of, of that discussion. Uh, and um, uh, if that goes through the way it's proposed, that building will be turned from a public building into a private building uh, for use for the power project. And I think that's probably the central point. So if you have concerns for the Moat Park building, uh, you need to call your commissioner and let them know what your feelings are about that uh, and uh, uh, more information to come on that. Um, I want to say thank you to the staff member from the uh, uh, engineering department who put up the uh, uh, traffic monitor, electronic traffic monitor uh, at my request. I had a, a constituent who was concerned about what they considered speeding on Main Street, and I think the traffic monitor did its job, and, and it told us that it's not a significant speeding issue, uh, maybe a noise issue on occasion, but uh, that service is available uh, on specific requests. Uh, and I was thankful that we did that. It really answers the question about do we have speeding or do we not have speeding measured over a, a, time, a time constraint. Um, I have received a couple calls about what I would call abandoned cars. Uh, and I think uh, the person who called me uh, most recently is concerned that somehow we're drifting back uh, from a time when uh, we had done a pretty good job of cleaning up uh, abandoned cars and, and his, his personal feeling was uh, that we need to get more aggressive in that area. If you have concerns for abandoned cars in your neighborhood, please call your, your city commissioner. Also, I mentioned the last meeting uh, concern about people parking on sidewalks. Uh, and I've had conversation with police chief uh, and uh, he's asked me to uh, repeat a conversation about the fact that it's, it's not appropriate to be parking on, on, on the um, um, uh, grassy area between the street and the sidewalk or on a sidewalk. Those are all violations of the city charter. And so uh, people who have concerns from that should call those into the police department and the uh, patrolling officer will investigate that. Uh, lastly, uh, bring greetings from Penick the Pickman Neighborhood Improvement Corporation. Uh, and I will tell you that the conversation with the, with the McDonald's building started in Penick. That's where it came from. Uh, and a couple of the members of the, uh, of the Penick committee uh, were very, very tenacious 
in terms of asking good questions and bringing others into that conversation. Uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for their efforts and it looks like we're moving ahead in a, in a good process. The comment that I'll bring from Penick is, put your trash out on the day of delivery or on the night before. Don't set your trash out a week before. Uh, and then we can take some pictures and show some places, but uh, you know we're getting used to a new trash pickup system uh, and it is not helpful to, to put your trash out and leave it sitting on the, on the street or wherever uh, all week long as we wait for the next delivery date. So it uh, seems like a fairly uh, common uh, assumption, but not held by everyone. So uh, we need to remind people that put your trash out the night before your scheduled pickup. Uh, and uh, then once uh, that's done, please uh, uh, retain your vessels for the trash and bring them onto your property so that we don't have them sitting on the street. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to uh, invite all of our citizens to our town hall uh, tomorrow evening, which is Wednesday, uh, the 17th, at the gazebo. I'm pretty sure we're going to have great weather. <laughs> so all of the commissioners, our city manager will be present, and we invite you all to bring your questions and your concerns, and we'll just have open mic. Thank you very much. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Have a